Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so, going to do some more work on the little generator. Didn't really need the generator until winter, really, until we're doing sort of heavy power consumption in the winter because obviously at the moment we've got loads of solar and solar really keeps us going. Anyway, but we're going to get it ready for the winter, aren't we? Right, so in today's episode, we're going to be hopefully mounting the alternator and loading it up but to load it up we need to finish the cooling system so we're going to be finishing the secondary cooling system so the secondary cooling system is going to be as previously stated um, a motorcycle radiator which for now until we're actually properly floating um, or reliably floating to get some seawater coming through we're going to be using a remote radiator so the remote radiator is going to be off like the sound of the bow, blah blah blah. But we need to make the circuit and then we need to be able to make it, change it to seawater when the time comes. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to mount the alternator, hopefully load it up once the cooling system is working. And we're going to get some monitoring as well on the cooling system. So yeah, let's get stuck in. So these, these two tubes here are for the, the auxiliary cooling, auxiliary, will be the seawater. So I want to put a drain, so I'm going to put the drain on the lowest part of the, of the tube so we, so we can basically dump any salt if we need to or we can give it a flush or... So I want this to be a straight run so I can give the tubes a clean, so with like a straight approach to it, a clean through. So that's going to go on there, but then we need to tee off on this one. So we need to tee off, which is going to go to the radiator, um, which will be will be what goes into the exhaust at a later date. So we've got a raw water pump, so I've got like a nice silicone U. So that's going to be coming off this one here, and then going straight down to the top of this. So we need to put some more copper in here, don't we? So I think that's where we'll start. So I've cut all my pieces of pipe and T's and stuff like that. So I've decided to go for two, two valves. So I only bought one, but I've got one I can use as a blank for now. So I'm going to have one as a, as a drain, as we, as we said, and then I'm going to have another one at the top. So we can actually clean the inside of the heat exchanger tube then. And also we can potentially take off some water. So if we wanted to pump some water somehow, say if the cats have a water a cooling issue or something, we could actually pump excess water from the generator to wherever we decide we want to, can't we? Because these move a bit of water, don't they? So yeah, so water's got to come in, got to go through this, this loop here, down through the heat exchanger, back, and then back to wherever we, we want it to go, as in, we're going to go to our radiator in it. But yeah, so we're going to put a drain there, and then, a base now, I've just I found like an isolator, so I'm just going to put that in there for now, but it will have two of these nice ones. Um, cool, right, so now what I need to do is remember, try and solder it up. Obviously I'm not very good at soldering, but nothing leaked, so as somebody pointed out, as long as it doesn't leak, it doesn't matter. You work on making it pretty after. I mean, I'm sort of going to get painted and sort of wrapped with like, I'm lagging, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Right, let's solder this up. Put the two valves on now. Don't know. It's hard to tell whether they're sealed or not, but 
Um, maybe we could maybe pressure test them. Well, they're not hemorrhaging that fast anyway, so good enough for a test. So yeah, we've got two valves. So basically, this is our dump. So we can dump the salt, and then we're gonna, gonna get another matching valve like this one to go here. But I didn't have one, um, and then we can clean out the loop then, can't we? So right, so we put some hoses on. So that's that bit So it's not going to be annoying, is it? It's all going to be rubber and iron and stuff like that. So. Right, so now I need to mount the radiator and then we can figure out the rest of the plumbing. So hopefully it's all watertight now, so I put the original the impeller in, I've got a new pump kit for it, but while we're doing testing and stuff like that, it's not falling apart, so it'd be good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to fill it with water, not massively happy with my pipe work, but I think it'll be fine for now, it might be prone to airlocks and stuff like that, but we will definitely rectify that. So yeah, let's put some water in it and then we'll... Um, See if, if any if there's any leaks. Um, I've, I still haven't got the right hose clips, um, but I'm just holding together with cable ties at the moment. If they don't hold, then there's a problem with the joints in there. So, so yeah, right. Let's pour some water in. So I'm just going to put a straight water in it for now because obviously it's going to be dumped quite a few times. So. Right, so I think I've got more water on the floor, but hey, uh, let's give it a run. Let's see if it moves water. That'd be the first step, won't it? So. So that was basically a leak test, but they are equalizing temperatures, so that's always that's always good, isn't it? So gonna have my lunch now. Um, after my lunch, gonna try and remount the alternator, we're gonna hook up a bank of batteries, um, try and somehow discharge these batteries so we can then recharge the batteries, so actually put it under under some some load, so that'd be quite interesting. Okay, so I've rigged our slightly good batteries. Um, at the minute, they're reading 21.4 volts. So we can give these a bit of a charge, can't we? So it's all hooked up in a 24 volt configuration. I've got me, me amp gauge. Um, so we can see how much current we're actually drawing. Um, so what I need to figure out is what all these wires on the alternator do. Because in my experience, an alternator won't work unless it has a signal. But last time it worked. Um, I wrote down all the all the wires, or what what the colour identification does on the wires. But so yellow is phase. God knows blue the lamp. So I'm guessing that gives a signal to the dashboard to say that you're not charged or something. Green is for the ignition. Um, red is volt sense. So I'm guessing. 
if the battery is a long way you can actually sense the voltage at the batteries don't know brown is digital field monitor not a clue anyway we're going to run it and then we're going to start playing around with some wires as well just to see if we can make it charge harder charge less i don't know right let's fire up So at the moment we're not drawing any current through the, through the 24 volt alternator. So at the moment the meters are saying that we're only drawing 2 amps. But the, the volt meter is at 28 volts, thank God. So unless the batteries won't Take a charge, you know, right, we need to load all the batteries. So I'm spending most of my time actually trying to let the batteries come down. So I've now put another, another, a different battery on it, which I've nicked out of a van. And this one of my vans, so. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a H4 halogen running, running at the moment. That's drawing six amps. All of the spotlights together are only drawing six amps. Um, we've got a big, Snail family called, um, otherwise for that. So that's drawing 11 amps, so that's a bonus. So say the spotlight is drawing 6.8, the halogen is drawing 6.5, I've got an inverter running off this battery, so I'm running two, a couple of different 12 volt circuits. Um, Unfortunately, the inverse is only pulling two and a half amps, so um, I'm running a fan. So actually, I need to load it up a bit more, don't I? So we'll let, we'll let both batteries come down again, so we'll have, we'll have another look at the amps gauge to see what we draw. Uh, I'll put a switch on that wire so I can, I can um, control it now, so... Um, Alright, let's give it a try. I'm going to run the engine at its maximum RPM for a while. Get it really hot so the film starts open anyway, but get, get the whole system as warm as possibly can. In the meantime, the batteries are draining, then we'll, we'll hit the alternator and, and then just basically wait until the batteries are fully charged, but it doesn't take long with this alternator to finish with it. So, and then the only real test is to charge our big batteries on the boat into it, so yes, give it a try.
Quite a success, to be honest with you. Um, no real dramas. Um, I had like a, a little hose vibrate off um, earlier and some coolant everywhere, but wasn't really wasn't boiling or anything like that. I mean, I mean the highest coolant temperature I saw was about 85 degrees. So um, I think the only improvements I could do is the fan on the radiator, obviously. It's only like touching so sort of 30% of the radiator, so if we can get like a bigger a bigger fan, that'll be um, an improvement because then it'll cut in and cut out more rather than on most of the time. And the heat exchanger itself works works amazing to be honest with you. Um, quite a bit of I could see like the temperature differential from it from it from it going in and coming back out. So yeah, these 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 do work. Struggling to tighten the belt up enough on the alternator where I've made my elongations to, to swing the alternator it's actually binding a bit so I need to like obviously when the alternator comes off I need to like increase it a bit so, so I can get more swing I might put like um, a jack screw in it so I can actually adjust it and hold it because you know it's like trying to hold an alternator tight in it um, but yeah so I think next time I'll be obviously adjusting stuff like that but it's almost time to take it apart, get it all prepped and whatever, uh, work out where we need more brackets and stuff like that and get it all in paint. Um, I'm going to put some like earth straps on it and some rubber feet on the on the base. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's, well, there's lots more work to do, but I think the next time it's going to be like little tinker jobs and finishing stuff off and obviously there's loads of wiring to do. Um, what I could do with doing actually, which I'm not quite sure about yet, is um, obviously when we load the alternator the engine has to be up to speed you can't load the alternator at a thousand revs otherwise it just kills the engine the engine needs some, some momentum to keep it going um, so I need to figure out how, how we're actually going to control the alternator um, but yeah, I'll do some research yeah, thanks for watching see you next time Should we open it? Got some tidying to do.